Hi, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com and today we're here with the Oberheim Expander. This was sent to me by a customer um, who used this regularly. It was working great and then one day it just stopped working. So today we're going to do a little Synth CPR and resuscitate this Oberheim Expander. Let's start by taking a look at what the problem is. Um, it came to me with the symptom of it doesn't work. Um, so let's see what it doesn't work means. So I see that the uh, lights here, the LEDs turn on, but there's nothing on the displays. Uh, so basically there is some power to this because these LEDs are lighting up, uh, but the displays are dead and it's not completing the boot process. Normally I'd expect the LEDs to light up for a second and then the displays to show stuff and then be able to use the synth. So um, it's not completely dead uh, but, it, but it is not working. So let's find out what the deal is. So let's start by opening up this Oberheim Expander and having a look at what's inside. To get into the Oberheim Expander you remove four screws here in the front and then one screw towards the top of each side panel and then you are able to fold it open like this and get to the inside. So this is what we've got going on inside the expander. For those of you who don't know, the Oberheim expander is basically a keyboardless six voice version of the Matrix 12. So we have a, a few things here. We have starting here we have the, the power transformer. And then we have a power supply. And you'll notice the power supply doesn't have those huge heat sinks um, that, that are on the other Oberheim OB series because this actually uses a switch mode power supply. So there's your main transformer and there's a, another transformer here and the transistors are a lot lighter duty because it's a switch mode power supply. Uh, so we have a power supply. Up here we have the processor board and uh, this Matrix 12 and the uh, expander actually use two different processors. So there's a processor here on the processor board and there's actually another processor down here on the voice board. But our processor board has the battery, it has the CPU, it has the ROM and the RAM and a bunch of other uh, IC chips there. Over here we have uh, basically the, the pot board, the one that has the uh, rotary encoders and, and much of the uh, switches. This board that's raised up here is the display board. It has uh, three vacuum fluorescent displays here that run off of about 55 volts. And then down here we have the analog board, the voice board. Uh, and you can see that the, the voices are arranged here. There's uh, six columns, pretty much identical circuits, one for each voice, and then some common circuitry here. This is pretty much an overview of what's inside the, uh, the Oberheim expander. And now let's try to find our problem. So if this were completely dead, the first thing that I would try to look at would be the fuse, which is tucked away here in the back. Obviously you'd have everything unplugged, and you could pull that little cover off and take the fuse out and test it for continuity. But since we have LEDs lighting up, I know that the, the fuse has got to be okay. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the power supply voltage rails and, and see if they're present and accounted for. If a voltage rail is missing, that could explain why, like the CPU isn't booting up or something like that. So we're going to probe here on these connectors that go off to the different boards. Um, I'll probe here on the one going off to the processor board. Uh, so let's start with the 5 volt rail. So there's uh, this is the ground pin here. I'm just touching the uh, crimped connector underneath and I'll touch the other one here. So the 5 volt rail is at 5.108 volts, which is fine. Uh, the next one I'm going to check, since we don't have displays, maybe the, uh, the, the 55 volt rail to the vacuum fluorescent display is missing. Let's check that out. And uh, no, 68 volts. And while it's a little high, uh, it should be, you should still be able to see a display if the display is being written to. So 68 volts isn't excessively high and the display should still work with this voltage. So that's not our problem. Now let's check the uh, uh, 12 volt rails. Um, presumably the 12 volts is just used for the analog circuitry. Um, so I don't really see how that would uh, 
cause our problem, but let's check things out. So here's a uh, minus 12 volts is at negative 11.91, which is okay. And uh, 12 volts is at 11.93, so that's fine. Uh, there's another power rail. Uh, it's a 9 volt AC rail, which is used to um, drive the uh, vacuum fluorescent displays. So that's not going to be responsible for this problem, but we'll check it out nonetheless. So I changed my meter to volts AC, and I'm going to probe between the two AC pins, and I get 8.20, which is fine. So uh, the power supply actually seems to check out okay. So next we're going to move over here to the processor board, and here's our CPU chip. It's a 6809 processor. Uh, the other Oberheim OB series synthesizers used a Z80 processor, so um, if you watched any of my other videos and saw me troubleshooting that, it's a different processor, but the uh, approach to troubleshooting it is pretty much the same. Uh, we're going to start and look uh, at the reset line to make sure that that reset line is uh, going high and telling the uh, CPU to start running. We're going to look for a clock signal being put in to, to clock the CPU and uh, then if that's okay we're going to just kind of probe the address and data lines and see if there's activity if the CPU is seemingly doing stuff. So let's start with the reset line. On the 6809 the reset line is on pin 7 so it's technically it's not reset so when it is low that means that it is reset and when it goes high, that means that it is not reset and that the CPU should start running. So basically, what we're looking for is we're looking for this line to go to 5 volts shortly after we turn on the synthesizer. Basically, there's a little delay there on, on sending the reset line high, uh, just so th things like memory and other chips can get powered before the CPU starts sending requests to them. So we're going to turn this on. And sure enough, it went high. I'll turn it off again, and you'll see there's a tiny little delay between when I flick the switch and when the line goes high, and that's what it's supposed to do. So the reset line is, and, and all the circuitry for the reset section is working fine. The next thing we're going to look at is the, the clock. Uh, so this uses an external clock, and you can see the crystal is actually right here. And uh, according to schematic, it's a 16 megahertz crystal, which is divided in half. So we should be getting about 8 megahertz here on the CPU. So it's possible that the, the crystal, crystal resonator is bad, or one of the chips or transistors in the, uh, the clock circuit is bad, and the CPU is never getting clocked and is therefore never executing any instructions. So we're going to look at the external crystal pin, which is pin 38, so right next to the uh, reset line, which we just looked at. My frequency counter is kind of, oh, because I had my finger on it. Um, so here, I took my finger off of it. My finger is no longer resting against the board. And the frequency counter reads 8.00278 megahertz. So we're getting a clock uh, from our crystal and the clock is the correct speed. So we are clocking the CPU chip, um, but still the synthesizer isn't booting up. So now let's kind of probe the data and address bus of this CPU chip and see if there's any activity there, see if there's any signs of, of life in this system. Uh, because there should be, because we're resetting the CPU and having it run, and we're clocking the CPU, so it should be executing instructions and doing stuff on address and data bus. So let's start with the data bus. The data bus starts here on pin 24 and goes on up. So this is 21, 2, 3, 4. And you see this mess on the scope. Um, that's uh, It's not going to trigger because this is not a repeating waveform. This is, uh, this is just data, data flying by. So uh, there's stuff on the, that pin. We'll just kind of go up the different pins of the 8-bit data bus and there's there's stuff happening on the data bus so data bus act has activity now let's check the address bus so address bus starts at pin 23 and, and goes down from there or actually it ends on pin 23 so 
You can see that it is toggling things on the address bus. Yet stuff isn't working. So it's now safe to say we don't have a power supply issue. We don't have a problem with our CPU. We don't have a problem with the CPU reset circuit. And we don't have a problem with the clock. There's signs of life there, but it's just still not working. So because I didn't want to turn this into a very lengthy video showing boring oscilloscope troubleshooting, uh, I, and it was kind of awkward to do it with the oscilloscope there, uh, I, I continued to troubleshoot it. And what I found was there was a bad NAND gate chip here in the read-write control line, um, or interpreting the read-write control line and addressing all the other chips like the displays and the RAMs and the ROMs and stuff like that. So I've uh, removed that NAND gate and put a new NAND gate in. So with that IC chip change, now we'll turn it on. And the LEDs go out and the menus come up. Uh, so let's test it out and see if we get sound out of it. <laughs> And we do. Uh, the menus over here, they're responsive. Uh, it's switching, looks like it's switching patches. Uh, so it, it looks like we have resuscitated this Oberheim expander. So I hope that joining me on this brief repair provided an interesting glimpse inside the Oberheim expander. This has been Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanks for watching and have a great day.